Good day to you, my YouTubing companions. I am Dave. And I'm at the return of the prodigal Jacob. Yes, that's us. And this right here is the Intel Hades Canyon NUC. Ba, 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 ba. This is the first device we've had a chance to check out that brings us the results of an Intel CPU and an AMD GPU bumping uglies and spawning a fresh chip. Yes, the Hades Canyon NUC has the KB Lake G chip inside it, supporting both Intel's core architecture and AMD's Vega graphics tech. The road to hell is paved with good intentions, and Intel's intentions for heading down the Hades Canyon are most definitely that. Yeah, they were looking to knock Nvidia off their mobile and GPU perch with a single chip solution that would offer a high-end CPU and graphical performance with a footprint far smaller than anything the traditional mobile GPU design could offer laptops and small form factor PC builders. While the KB Lake G design is ostensibly built for a mobile platform, Intel have a long tradition of dropping their latest mobile silicon into a tiny desktop rig named the Next Unit of Computing, or NUC. And this is the latest NUC. But can this mobile tech offer desktop class performance, giving Nvidia a run for their money? Or is this bare bones machine going to struggle to make its mark? This is the top Hades Canyon NUC, sporting the very finest KB Lake G with the most powerful version of the AMD Vega Loner silicon. Yeah, the chip at the heart of this device is the Intel Core i7-8809G with the Vega MGH GPU variant. That means it's a quad-core processor with 8 threads and an attached 24CU AMD Vega GPU, supporting 1536 graphics core next cores. It's a bit odd given that Intel had the coffee late range of chips with 6-core silicon right down to the Core i5 level for ages now. That and for the money you're spending on the Hades Canyon, you're only getting an old-school quad-core. But considering they squeezed an entire graphics chip onto the same package connected to the CPU via Intel's embedded multi-die interconnect, or EMIP for short, that's not too surprising. The graphics component is the most interesting thing then, and that GPU is a little under half the size of the Vega 56 card and comes with half the connected second gen high bandwidth memory too, at 4GB. That still gives it a lot of graphical power compared with the previous low power NUX, but for $1,000 bare bones you might be a little bit disappointed at the performance you get out of it. Yes, $1,000 for a bare bones kit. That means you get no storage, no OS installation, and no expensive memory for your initial outlay. And packing that much extra into your Hades Canyon is actually going to add a lot onto the cost. Yeah, the review unit Intel sent through has 16GB of 3200 DDR4 memory, a 120GB 800p Optane SSD, and a larger 545 Intel SSD for data. And all told, that comes to $1,700. Ouch. In terms of the CPU performance, it's exactly what you think it might be. Classic 14 nanometer KB Lake quad-core pace. That's no bad thing, it's still the Intel traditional single core pace, but in these post-Ryzen days, 8-thread performance just looks pedestrian now. Yeah, but it's the graphical power that we're really interested in, especially with Intel claiming the GTX 1060 Max-Q level gaming prowess from their collaboration with AMD for the Vega MGH GPU silicon. So, does it match Nvidia's mobile mainstream? Ah, of course not. That would be a vain hope from a GPU that's got less than half the graphics silicon of a Vega 56 card. To be fair, it's barely competing with a mobile GTX 1050 Ti, let alone a 1060 Max-Q. At 1080p, you can get some decent gaming performance out of it. At high-end settings, you're looking at around 40 frames per second in the likes of Hitman and Rise of the Tomb Raider in DX12 mode. With the less demanding GTA 5, you can hit up to almost 50 frames per second, which sounds pretty good. But the mobile GTX 1060 in the mighty Aero 15W will top 85 FPS in GTA 5 and 60 FPS in Rise of the Tomb Raider. That's only a little more expensive than a filled Hades these Canyon machine and comes with both a screen and a keyboard attached. Yeah, that's the benefit of a laptop. But who is the Hades Canyon aimed at? That's the question we've been asking ourselves since we started playing this machine, haven't we? Yeah. It's a beautifully built and well designed package, and it feels incredibly weighty with the amount of cooling Intel have packed in to cope with the unlocked Core i7 8809G at its heart. And that feels reassuring. Yeah, and it looks good too. The chassis is neat and compact, and who doesn't love a glowing skull picked out in bright LEDs on their PC? And look at that motherboard. That's some sexy printed circuit board right there. And if you're not getting a little flustered over that AMD Intel Silicon, you must be dead inside. But at this exorbitant price, who's going to buy it? The bare bones cost is already pretty high, but when you add in the necessarily expensive memory and M2 storage, an operating system of course, the cost can quickly spiral up and up. Yeah, at this price you're looking at the cost of a high-end gaming laptop or a desktop PC, both of which are going to easily outperform this machine and have greater utility too. Intel talking about this is a great VR machine too, but a similarly priced gaming laptop is going to be more powerful to cope with the rigours of VR, and a laptop is also far more suited to running a virtual reality setup, you're likely going to be moving around quite a bit. You can also build yourself a small desktop PC that's not much bigger than this, at the same performance level for way, way, way less. 
Essentially, Intel are asking you to pay for the development costs of jamming AMD and Intel Silicon together in one package, which would be fine if it was offering something unprecedented, but it's really not, especially not on the desktop. In a laptop, the KB Lake G chip is still going to be very interesting, but Intel have just produced another overpriced NUC. It may be more powerful than any other NUC they've ever made, but I just can't find any reason to recommend anyone pay this price. So that's our take on Intel's new Hades Canyon NUC. It's a good looking, well built svelte machine, but without the performance to justify its super high price. Yeah, basically go and spend the same money on a good gaming laptop and you'll be much, much happier. Thanks for pointing your peepers at the screen while a digitized representation of us mouthing noises at you. And if you liked any of that, give us a like and subscribe to the channel for lots more gaming and hardware goodness. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.